Yo, what is going on, guys? Yuri Yumiko here, and today we're back with some more If My Heart Had Wings. Now, last time we left off, we ended the last episode with a very dramatic uh, bathroom rescue scene. So, essentially, uh, oh God, Kotori, Kotori tried to get into the bath. Um, obviously, she can't walk, so she ended up falling, and we valiantly ran in there to rescue her. Um, so, I'm kind of now expecting a relationship with her to kind of start leaning more towards a serious one. Because we've also had multiple moments now where we've kind of thought to ourselves like, Oh hey, there's something different about her. But, without, thir uh, ugh, without further ado, let's jump right on into it. Okay, we're jumping into it. Holy, <laughs> I don't know where. I don't know what the context is. It went that way. Leave it to me. At Ageha's signal, I ran ahead to block the cat's escape. Meow. Ageha and I blocked the stray cat's paths, and it searched for a third route. And there, come here, kitty. There was Habanesa with an almost sickeningly broad smile. Look, I've got your favorite dried sardines! So many of them! Now, that sure was a wheedling voice. <clears throat> the sardine that she dangled in front of the cat got its attention. Meow. However, as expected of a stray cat, it won't let its guard down so easily. Habane-san! The secret weapon! Nod. Habane-san nodded and took out a small fishing rod, with a dried sardine hanged at the end of the line. Meow. Look, look! Dangle, dangle. Meow. The sardine drew the stray cat's attention as if it was a blessing descending from heaven. Habane-san was skillfully handling the rod. She was almost literally reeling the cat towards her with the dried fish. Come on, come on! Meow, meow. Whenever the cat reached out its paw, Habane-san was pulling the rod away with the right timing so that it wouldn't reach the sardine. Actually, it was slightly mean. Eventually, the cat ran out of patience and used its last resort. Meow! Jump. The cat jumped up onto Habane-san's lap all by itself. I've got you! Meow! Splendid. The cat settled into her arms. Alright! The operation was a huge success! I can't believe it fell for such a stupid plan. I felt like saying, come on, straight cat, you can do better than that. Hee <laughs> hee, good kitty! Habane-san stroked the cat sitting on her lap with an affectionate smile that we'd never seen before. Though it seemed like the cat didn't really like being stroked, he was too focused on the large amount of sardines to run away. You're cute, aren't you? You're a good boy, aren't you? Munch, munch. Meow. Even though it's stray, it's a pretty cat. There, there. Ageha started stroking it too. All girls like cats. Can I stroke him too? Meow. Hey, he's afraid of you! We went through so much trouble to catch it, it would be a bother if it ran away. Ugh, even I like cats, even though I like cats too. This was a bit unfair. What's next? Next is... I opened the notebook to check. Things I want to do. It was a list of items written, written in Habane-san's notebook. First of all, this. I want to stroke a cat. Is done. We were in the middle of clearing Habane-san's to-do list. As Igeha and I examined the notebook, Habane-san looked at us sideways with a little suspicion. How did it get to this point? But to answer that, we need to go back to this morning. Here's our context, I guess. This morning, I was worried if I should return the withdrawal notice that I'd picked up earlier to its owner. Returning lost property should have been a natural thing to do, but if I did that, she would probably leave school right away, so I kept it. If that's what she wanted, I had no reason to stop her, but somehow I was hesitant. I was pacing back and forth along the hallway until... Habane-san, wearing her school uniform, poked her head out from her room. She was sneakily checking the situation outside. Ah! As our eyes met, she slammed the door shut. Why is she acting so suspiciously? It wasn't anything out of the ordinary for Habane-san to be suspicious, but there's definitely something behind her behavior just now. I concealed myself in the dining hall for a while. I waited about ten minutes. Hat came out of the little entrance at the bottom of Habane-san's bedroom door. He looked 
took a look around the entranceway, then came into the dining hall. Quack! <clears throat> Shh! Hat went back to hapani -san's room. There was no one there? Quack, quack! Alright. What does she mean by alright? hapani -san sneaked out of her room. She took a peek into the dining hall just to be sure, but I was hidden behind the counter. Looks like no one's here. If that guy catches me, he'll make such a fuss. By that guy, she probably meant me. hapani -san was wearing her uniform, but she didn't have her bag. In the entranceway, she opened up her notebook and looked inside. I sneaked up behind her. I did this before, so today... Are you going to skip school again today? <laughs> hapani -san sprung up screaming and threw the notebook out. Why are you here? I checked carefully. That's why, that's why you should stop sending a duck to scout for you. Hey man, don't trash hat. As I picked up the notebook that she dropped, I looked at the open page. Things I want to do. This was the page I saw before. Give me back my notebook! Could it be that you're planning to do all of this before you quit school? Ugh. Seems like I was spot on. I'm going to finish all the remaining things today. That's enough, give it back. I obediently handed back the notebook. And then, when hibani sen started leaving, I followed her. Why are you following me? I'm gonna help. Huh? Why? It must be tough by yourself, right? hibani sen looked at me as if I just made a fool of myself. When we stopped up in front of the front door, the doorbell rung. Who could it be at this time? Good morning! Ageha. Oh? You two are going together? What did you come here for? Well, you see... Ageha pulled me closer and whispered to my ear. Yesterday, something felt a bit strange. I thought she might start skipping school again. So she came here to invite hibani san to go to school with her? Your intuition was spot on. Seriously? Yeah, the truth is... How should I explain this? hibani san I'm borrowing your notebook. I went back to hibani san and took her notebook. <laughs> uh, hey! Using it, I explained the situation to Ageha. I told her that she wanted to finish the whole things I want to do... Things I want to do... Yeah, I want to do list written in her notebook today. I made sure not to mention the dropping out of school issue. This looks like a tough job. Ageha groaned a little as she looked at the list. That's right. This is why I'm taking a day off school. I guess that's the only way. I'll help too! That is how Ageha and I ended up going with hibani san against her will, to clear the things remaining on her to-do list one by one. As far as the urgent search for club members is concerned, I thought of a possible solution last night. That's why I'm, I was accompanying hibani san like this. That's enough! Now go to school, you two! She said while stroking the cat, but we didn't listen. Okay, next is Ito-san's pedigree. Ageha points in red. Stroke the head of the big dog in the neighborhood. It's really scary, but it might be unexpectedly friendly. If possible, I'd like to ride around on his back, from the list. The Ito family is wealthy and they have a very large dog called Pedigree. They're, let they're letting him run free in their garden. When we were kids, such a big dog was an unusual sight. We were often watching him lumbering around their, their spacious lawn. So you'd like to ride on its back? I have lifted habane san up on two occasions. Both times she was like a feather. Well, perhaps that'd be an exaggeration, but she was really light. If it's habane san it could be possible. He is a Saint Bernard after all. Pedigree was a Saint Bernard. They're pretty huge. While seriously considering hibani sans silly idea, we headed towards Ito's house. Phew, I got all sweaty. Said Ageha as she put the baggage down on the grass. But there's a breeze here. It feels good. Today was sunny and it wasn't too humid. The sunlight was quite intense though, so the wind that blew here felt nice. Here. I threw a sports drink to a geha. Oh, thanks. And one for you too, hibani san I took orange juice from the convenience store bag and passed it to hibani san Thank you. 
Do you want to sit down here? Huh? Uh... Ageha, give me a hand. Ageha, who was enjoying her sports drink, got up and came over. What are you doing? I want to put Hibane-san down here. There's no need. Oh, I see. I left living Hibane-san up to Ageha. I told her how to do it and supported her from the side with my hand. Okay, here we go. Phew. Thanks. Hibane-san sat down on the grass and comfortably straightened her back. Ah, <sighs> my butt was getting a bit hot. It seems that wheelchairs can get pretty stuffy in the summer. Now, lunch, lunch! It was 12.30 now, just the right time for a lunch break. We spread out the lunch boxes that we brought from the dorm, and the juice and snacks that we brought from the convenience store. We didn't have a sheet, but it felt like we were having a picnic. Let's eat! Thanks for the food! I made both mine and Habane-san's lunch boxes, while Ageha had brought her own. Munch munch. Oh, Habane-san, you've got a burger! Hey, let's trade it for my spring roll! Alright. Yay! Ageha delightfully stuffed her cheeks with the burger that she traded for her spring roll. Oh, you're good at cooking! I'm losing my confidence as a woman! Your mom's good at cooking though, isn't she? No, I can't be compared to a dedicated housewife. Habane-san, not used to this kind of atmosphere, was restlessly eating her lunch. However, she didn't look as uncomfortable as before. Ageha either didn't notice that, didn't notice that, or was pretending not to. She was behaving the same as always. This is the first time I've skipped school. So far, I've only thought of skipping on the day of the vacation, of the vaccinations. But hanging out with friends like this from time to time could be fine. Ageha said playfully. Skipping school for the first time must have excited her. If your mom finds out, she's totally going to kick your ass. Ugh. Ageha's mother didn't hold back when it, she was kicking her daughter's ass. I've been kicked too a few times when I got caught playing pranks together with Ageha. Those kicks were heavy and quite painful. That's why you can't tell her. Of course. If I did, I'd also get kicked. Or rather, I just didn't want her to worry unnecessarily. Hey, what's next? We all looked at the notebook. Throughout the morning, we already managed to clear five points. As for pedigree, Ageha was Ito's acquaintance, so we could enter their garden when we just asked. She didn't manage to ride on pedigree's back, but she did succeed in hugging him. In the end, he playfully leaned on her. This must have been quite tough for her. Pedigree probably weighs more than her. On top of that, he licked her all over their face. Habani-san looked deeply moved. Go to Cafe Flags. Oh. Go to Cafe Flags! Ageha read out loud one entry from the list. Where's that? It's over there in Windy... I don't need to go there anymore! Habani-san suddenly turned bright red and drew a line through that entry with a red pen. Ageha whispered something into her ear. Is there someone you want to go with? No, it's just a misunderstanding. Ageha whispered something to her, but Habane-san desperately tried to dodge the, the issue. What was this all about? This cafe has a somewhat adult atmosphere. It's run by a famous patissier, and they serve delicious sweets there. Hmm, so you want to go there? No, I said it was just a misunderstanding. I, I just heard someone talking about it at school, and I thought it sounded delicious, that's all. I, I don't know if this... I didn't know if this is that kind of place. That kind of place? It wasn't just a normal cafe? It's in a couple, so there's a ton of those kinds of customers there. It's known as a date spot for young women in Kazagara. I really didn't know about it. Pow! Habane-san pointed at me. She was strongly denying it, but it wasn't like I had any suspicions about it, really. Why don't you go with Aoi? Blech. Whoa, that, that kind of hurt. That kind of hurt, Kotori. Goddamn. What, 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 what are you talking about? I said that's not why I wrote this. Abani san had gone red and looked down. Well, I wouldn't really mind. That place is expensive, right? The cakes are about 800 yen per piece. The tea is about the same price. That was a little steep. The homemade milk. I don't even know. I'm not even gonna try and pronounce that. It's the trademark menu, though. 
Apparently it's really delicious. That's 1300 yen. For one cake? Well, it is in the same place as the supermarket that sells high-grade marbled meat for 2,980 yen for 100 grams. I was getting a somewhat larger allowance from my mom for helping out as a dorm mother, so... Next month will be fine. Like I said, it's not like that! I just heard someone say that it's a lovely cafe and that they sell delicious cakes and tea! I didn't say that I want to go there on a d d date with a boy! I never said it! It must have been a serious matter for her, since she repeated it twice. Overwhelmed by her determination, I just nodded silently. Alright, that conversation is over. As she one-sidedly dropped the subject, she used the pen to thoroughly blot out that entry. Huff, huff. It might have bled through to the other side of the page. Owie, you look a, you look a little disappointed, don't you? Huh? No, I don't. You have a sweet tooth, don't you? Y yeah. It doesn't mean that I'd get disappointed just by that. Wait, did I really look disappointed? Geha cleared away finished lunchboxes and opened a bag of snacks. We felt we were like we were on a trip, so we had bought various things. While eating some pretch snacks, Geha took another look at the notebook after Hibane-san was done with blotting. Which reminds me, we were in the middle of talking about what to do next. Hey, what's that? Ageha was looking at the number one top entry on the list. It was written with much bigger letters than the other entries. I want to... I want to cross over the passage of clouds. Yeah, I thought that was quite strange too. What is that? I wonder. You wonder? I'm not the one who wrote this. habane san answered while crunching the pretch snack she got from Ageha. Now that she mentioned it, the handwriting was different. Eat Hagen dazs to my heart's content, and so on were written with neat, uniform characters. Compared to the very methodical handwriting, I want to cross over the passage of clouds, was written in a bold, rampant way. So who wrote it? The owner of the notebook. It was already written in when I found it. There were a few entries written in this rampant fashion, and under those were the neatly written ones. It seems that Habane-san added them, continuing from what someone else had written. You found it? What do you mean? I found it in my room when I came to Flying Fish Manor. It was hidden in a gap between the shelves. So this isn't your notebook? That's right. It's probably the diary of someone who lived there earlier. Oh, did I skip something? When she said it's a diary, I hesitated to just go ahead and flip through its pages. Had abani son read it? Does that mean you continue to write in someone's diary? Although both Ageha and I looked at her questioningly, Habane-san remained quiet. She didn't want to waste her remaining pages? I don't think that was the reason. That aside, one more thing piqued my interest. I want to cross over the passage of clouds. What was that passage of clouds? When it comes to clouds... I looked up. There was a blue sky, some small clouds, and a giant windmill. The windmill blades turning with the wind really resembled glider wings. Okay then, next is this! Blood donation! Let's all go and have our blood taken! Phew, that last one was a bit of a toughie. My eyes are still flickering. The last thing from the to-do list we did was Complete Lady in Silver Gun. Something like this. If you're wondering what it is, it's a shooting game. We were at the arcade playing the game until we finished it just now. We took turns playing it and repeatedly used continues. It was so hard that it made getting to the ending all the more impressive. Wow, it really is a masterpiece, isn't it? I'm no good at shooters. The best at this game was Geha, followed by Havane-san. Apparently she played it by chance when she was skipping school before and having fun at the arcade. It seems she was enraged by the incredible difficulty. Determined to complete the game someday, she had added that entry to the notebook. We spent no less than 3,000 yen before we finished it. I don't know how much that is, but that sounds like a lot. <laughs> With this, have we cleared everything on the list? Yeah. While we were at it, we'd also finished the entries that Habane-san hadn't written. The only one left was to cross over the passage of clouds. Since we didn't know entirely what that meant, the list was essentially all clear. Now that we finished it, it feels too quick. I'm glad- Oh, I'm glad we finished before dinner. 
<laughs> You're right. If we want to hang out, we should do it again some other day. <laughs> What's the matter? N nothing. abani sans expression was dark. Just like a geha, it seems that she felt unsatisfied that everything ended unexpectedly quickly. Well then, I'm hungry. I guess I'll be going home. Hopefully your mom won't find out about this. It should be fine. Our homeroom teacher isn't that diligent. But Hotaru is quite serious. If she realizes that you hadn't gone to school, she might tell your mom, right? Uh, if that happens, I'm taking you down with me. Uh, come on. Are you going to tell on me? For the first time in five years, you shall receive the ass kicking from my mother. After saying that jokingly, a gay hot turned to Habani-san. Thanks for today. Thanks to you, Habani-san, I had a lot of fun. Yeah. Well then, see you tomorrow. Ageha said with a smile and turned to leave. With light steps, she walked up the gentle slope. Ah! Uh, mm hmm? Abane-san started saying something, so Ageha stopped walking. Ah, uh, um... Abane-san looked down, hesitating to speak. She looked like she could cry at any minute. Ageha waited for a little while for Habani-san to open her mouth. Patiently. However, Habani-san wasn't able to say anything more. Hey, Habani-san! The truth is, I came to meet you today because there was something I wanted to talk about. Something to talk about? Let's be in the soaring club together! I heard it from Ali. You know a lot about gliders, don't you? You always had fun when you went to the garage, didn't you? And if we were together, it would definitely be great fun. I'm sure every day would be like today. What do you think? Ageha closed her mouth and waited for a reply. I have no doubt that Habane-san was wavering. She was certainly interested in gliders, so I think she actually wanted to join the soaring club. So if she only could express those feelings now... I said I wouldn't do it, didn't I? But why? Just because. It has nothing to do with you. Habane-san's blunt refusal made Ageha's expression cloud up. I wonder why you're talking that way. Because you're sticking your nose in my business. Don't you think that's why you're cut off in the class? This time it was Habane-san who got irritated at Geha's remark. Well, excuse me for not fitting in. Unlike a certain somebody, I'm not such an ass-kisser. An ass-kisser, you say? Hold it, calm down, both of you. Why are you arguing all of a sudden? I couldn't just stand and watch, so I stepped in. After we had so much fun today, let's just cut it- Whoa! Ageha pushed me aside as though I was a hindrance. No good. It looks like she's quite pissed off about that ass kisser comment. I think that issue the other day was everyone's fault. Of course you would get angry at them for speaking to you like that. However, I don't think you also- However, I think you also have some very bad points. Like what? Like that attitude of yours! Ageha pointed her finger at Habane-san's face, as if she was pre presenting irrefutable evidence. You're always so... how should I put it? Defiant? That's why everyone misunderstands you. You should open up a little more, like when we were hanging out today. Thank you for your kindness. Not that I asked for it, though. What's with that way of talking? Grr. You really are kind. I know all about it. The reason why you've been speaking to me is so, so much is because our teacher asked you to. Oh! Ageha faltered for a moment and held her tongue after hearing Habana-san's words. Her cheeks suddenly got dyed red. I... I... Or are you so kind because you pity me? I'm sick of being treated like that. Habanisan told her that and turned her wheelchair sideways. Goodbye. Uh, hey! With that, she left by herself. Ageha. It's fine. What she said is all true. But that's not the reason why you did this, right? Aren't you also being misunderstood? Sorry, I'll be going now. Ageha looked like she didn't want to talk about anything now. With trembling shoulders, she went up the gentle hill road. After I saw Ageha off, I hurried back to the dormitory. Well, that was a bit of a sour way to end such a seemingly good day. Habani-san! Hey, Habani-san! Bang, bang, bang. Bang, bang. Hat came out as if to protest about the noise. Hey, is your buddy in there? Quack. Could you step aside a little? 
I moved Hat out of the way and peeked into Bonnie Sun's room through the duck door. Damn, that is in the way. I can't see anything. Ah, he mustn't do that. Uh, Kaneko san, hasn't she come back yet? No? Yeah? It looks like she's still out. Did something happen? Yeah, kind of. Say, could I ask you to prepare dinner? Huh? Me? I'm counting on you. Uh, it can't be. Wait a second, that's a pretty bad... And he's gone. Well, don't blame me for whatever happens. With this, I'm done for with everyone. I feel refreshed. That's not what it looks like, though. Habane-san wasn't surprised when I called out to her. She looked at me for a moment, but immediately turned back towards the lake. At night, the lake looked, at, looked like a stretched out, vast, pitch black darkness. On the other side was the windmill hill. It was illuminated and looked really beautiful. Since she hadn't come back to the dormitory, I guessed that she might be somewhere, to, somewhere around here. This is where I found her. What are you doing here? Self-assessment? I said it in a light-hearted way, but she didn't answer. Let's go back. It's almost time for dinner. Habane-san shook her head. You can't stay here all the time, can you? No way. I don't want to go back. Why not? I don't want today to end. When she muttered it quietly, her cheeks faintly quivered for a moment. What do you mean? If I go back to my room, it will be all over. Today was so much fun, I don't want it to end. Tears were mixed in with her voice. It's been so long since I spent time like this with people that were like friends. Habani song. And yet, it ended with a fight. Yes, that's true. A quarrel isn't the best way to end a fun day. For me, today was unbelievably fun as well. It was like going back to my childhood, doing nothing but playing around from sunrise till sunset. Knowing that Habani-san felt the same way made me a little happy. About Ageha. I didn't see what had happened in class, so I can't really say anything, but... She's a simple person. I don't think she would have done what the teacher had asked if she didn't want to. Yeah. Even if she hadn't been asked, she's the type who would have just, who would have just done it anyway. That sometimes causes problems though, right? I said it jokingly and Habani-san smiled a little. Yeah, I know. And today she wasn't asked to do that, but she still skipped school with us, didn't she? She had never done that before, and yet when things turned out like this, she still stuck with us. She's not a bad person. I think that she probably really wants to be your friend. Even a geha wouldn't go this far just for the sake of being kind. My... Hmm? My... Legs became like this two years ago. I had an accident when I was on a trip. Until then, I was just like you and everyone else. Standing, walking, running. I had a lot of friends and I was in a sports club. And I played volleyball. Really? I imagined Habani-san kicking the floor and jumping, launching an attack on the opponent's court. Surely it must have been a magnificent and lovely sight. Then my legs were injured in the accident, and I couldn't live without a wheelchair. The school I went to didn't have any elevators, and there were various steps all over the place. A step. Even as, a li even as little as five centimeters is a huge obstacle for a wheelchair. Even going to school became a huge problem. The life I had before the accident? Eating hamburgers with everyone after school? Going to buy clothes? I couldn't do such mundane things anymore. When my close friends became aware of that, everyone grew distant. I guess it's only natural since we couldn't hang out together. I don't think that's true. For friends. For real friends. Something like that wouldn't matter. They could still hang out with her. Saying that might have been just glossing over things though. At least, this was her own experience. Once during homeroom, the teacher who noticed that I was isolated from the others said this. habani san has been through so much, try to get along with her more. I was really shocked. I realized exactly the predicament I was in. After that, I secretly cried by myself. I felt so frustrated, so pathetic. To have everyone been so careful around me, 
I hated it, but there was nothing I could do. Habanishan's hands, tightly grasping the hem of her skirt, were trembling. It looked like the frustration of that time had come back to haunt her. <clears throat> That's why I came here. This school is completely barrier-free, so I can go there by myself without bothering anyone. Habanisan could go to our school all by herself, and could get in and out of the classroom without anyone's help. But it was still no good. School isn't a place where you could just be all by yourself. It wasn't just a physical problem. It's a social environment, and you can't get by without being involved with other people. To make matters worse, there's always the danger of getting a flat tire, and I can't even get into the bath by myself. I'm just so tired of it all. She muttered and gazed at the windmill hill on the other bank. The calm silhouettes of giant windmills seemed to help her settle down. That sounds tiresome. Doesn't it? Don't you think I've been trying really hard until now? I do. I agreed from the bottom of my heart. I couldn't simply say something like, Keep doing your best. Is the search for new club members for the Soren Club going well? Not really, but we should manage somehow. I have a feeling we'll make it in time. I see. That's good. That weird senpai. She's been doing her best all by herself this whole time, hasn't she? It would be very sad if she had to stop halfway. I'd also like to try flying, even just once, in that glider. Abanisan narrowed her eyes while saying this. She gazed at the sky above the windmill hill. Hey, you don't really want to quit school, do you? That's not it. My mom and dad are worried about me too. If I were to quit school and go back home, they'd be pleased. Abanisan smiled when she said that. But to me, it looked like a forced smile. I sat next to Habanisan, and just like her, viewed the scenery on the opposite bank. Before I came to Kazagara, I was in the bicycle club at a school far from here. She stole a glance at me when I started speaking, and listened to me without a word. I may not look like it, but I was a sports scholarship student, you know? I trained frantically every day in order to win races and be exempt from paying tuition fees. The practice was really tough, but riding the bike felt good, so it didn't feel like such hard work. Bicycle road races are incredibly tiring. In a big competition, you cycle a hundred kilometers in one day. A hundred kilometers? That's a lot. Isn't it? To make matters worse, you also have to go over hills in the way. Hill climbing is absolute hell. While climbing, I always wanted to give up. But after you pass the top, cycling down the slope feels amazing. Hmm. I couldn't tell if Abanisan was impressed or envious. It was fun, so I thought I'd try starting in races. In one competition, I came third. That's great! Was that a national competition? I nodded with pride. Actually, that was one of the few things that I could be proud of. Anchan came to watch. I was really happy about that. And I got greedy. In the first race of the second year, I had an accident. Another bike had fallen down and I got dragged along with it. It was in the middle of the downhill ride of all things. I was competing with several other participants. I was, too in I was impatient in wanting to take the lead and got too close to another bike. Then the accident occurred. The other bike suddenly lost its balance and I got tangled up with it. I fell over and hit the asphalt at the speed of dozens of kilometers per hour. Smiling bitterly, I rolled up the right leg of my pants and showed her. With that accident, my career as a racer ended all too soon. The scar from my surgery was still fresh. Abanisan looked at it and was at a loss for words. She could probably call that kind of injury getting away with just a scar. Oop, shit. With rehabilitation, I was able to walk again. The doctor said that now I don't have any problems with normal everyday life, but I can't ride a bike anymore. Is that the reason why you quit your previous school? I nodded quietly. I was a scholarship student, so it was pretty hard after I withdrew from the club, but I could have stayed there. However, my friends from the bicycle club were there, and when I was seeing them practicing, when I watched them doing their best from far, I couldn't live normally. My recovered leg from the rehabilitation actually made me feel even more depressed. If only I was just completely unable if only I was completely unable to move, I could have just given up. Such a thought had crossed my mind back then. It was difficult and painful. All those pent-up emotions were too much for me. 
That's why I came back. I ran away back to my hometown. After I finished my story, I felt refreshed for some reason. Now that I think about it, Abani-san was the first person I told all this. I didn't even open up to a gay hot and the others like this. Sometimes we feel like running away. In life there are more hardships than fun things. What Abani-san said to comfort me was very pessimistic. That must be how she really feels. However, I didn't tell her this because I wanted to be comforted. There were still things I wanted to say. There's some things that I realized from running away. There's nowhere else to go. I can't escape any further. It's a dead end. But right now, I don't see any way forward either. There is a way. For you, there are other ways. I thought I would regret it. Running away, I mean. But it wasn't like that. My hometown is the same as always. It's kindly welcomed me back. That's good, isn't it? That makes it even worse. The warmth of my hometown it makes me forget my pain and impatience. It felt like I was gradually being paralyzed. The pain. The importance of the things I'd lost. I was forgetting them little by little. If I lost that, would I still be myself? You have the glider. Yeah. I'm excited to think I could fly in it. I looked up at the night sky and imagined myself flying through the air. Beside me, Habanisan hanged her head. Do you have something like that? Something that lies beyond quitting school and returning to your hometown. Habanisan looked at me, visibly shocked. She was desperately trying to hold back the tears welling up in her eyes that were about to spill over. Don't say things like that. Something so cruel. Whether she has something ahead of her or not, <clears throat> when she realized this, she was more distressed than I expected. I don't think you have anything l Ugh. I don't think you have anything like that, right? Therefore, without your to-do list, everything's over. No, it's just... it was fun. If you want a bath, I'll help you get in. If you get a flat tire, I'll fix it as many times as necessary. Whenever you need help, I'll do anything. So... A tear ran down Habanisan's cheek, but it was only a single tear. I don't want to be a burden anymore. Give back my withdrawal notice! We went to get to the withdrawal notice that I had stuck to the back of the drawer. So that's where you hit it. When I held that piece of paper in my hand, those terrible things I had said to her skimmed through my mind. Do you have something like that? Something that lies beyond quitting school and returning to your hometown? Regretting those words, I gave you the withdrawal notice. You dropped this, so I picked it up. Thanks. However, Abani-san didn't take it right away. For her, taking it meant deciding her whole future. But in the end, she reached out her hand. Swish. I quickly pulled my hand away, much to her bewilderment. Actually, nope. What? I'm not going to give it back. I held on to it and left the room. Ah, oh, welcome back. Dinner's ready. He was very popular. We still have a whole pot left. What should we do with it? I slipped past Conoco and made some rummaging sounds through the kitchen. What are you doing? Not long after that, Habani-san came into the dining hall. Get back my withdrawal notice! Withdrawal notice? That's too bad. I've already hidden it somewhere. What do you think you're doing? Just to- I can't accept it. Just- just give it a chance. Huh? I don't know what you mean. Unreasonable feelings were bubbling up inside my chest. I knew how Abani-san felt. She must have had it rough. Just imagining it made my chest hurt. But it's only been ten days since I came here. I felt like I wanted to do something for her, but the time I've been given was too short. I know, I'm just meddling, I totally get it. Why are you talking to yourself? Give it back, it's mine! No way. If you want it back, look for it yourself. Mimi? What happened to that move from my nice serious conversation just a moment ago? The hell if I know. Ugh, this guy's a bully after all. I whistled awkwardly, trying to play dumb. Hey, Kaneko-san! Yes? You saw where he hit it, didn't you? Hmm, I wonder... Even if I knew I wouldn't tell you, 
And you say, if we were gone, Kotori-chan, I would be really lonely. <laughs> Abani-san's face became red. Looks like her rage gauge has, me has reached max. Idiot! Moron! Knucklehead! Even without it, I can still quit school! Throwing sharp-pointed parting remarks, Habani-san hurried out of the dining hall. Dinner's ready! You can heat it up in the microwave later! The door at the end of the hallway closed with a slam. So, where did you hide it? Sticking out my tongue, I pulled the piece of paper out from under my shirt. Not bad! Thanks for your help. We refuse to let her go! Oh, shit. <laughs> Excuse me. At lunch break, Ageha and I were called to the staff room. It was because we both skipped school yesterday. When we honestly said that we were having fun, we got a really severe scolding from our homeroom teacher. Well, that can't be helped. I'm glad they didn't contact their parents. Yeah. Ageha wasn't her usual cheerful self this morning. I said something terrible yesterday, didn't I? I just went and got all fired up. Don't worry about it. Habana-san does understand your real intentions. Actually, she was regretting it too. That quarrel with the Geha. No, that's not it. I think that the reason why I got really angry was probably because she hit the bullseye. She called me an ass kisser. You don't kiss up to people though, do you? I wonder. You know, there are a lot of people that I get along with. But I look back when we were all playing friend playing together, I don't really have any close friends. Now that she mentions it, Ageha gets along with everyone, but it doesn't look like she has any particularly close friends. To be honest, I thought that was a little strange. I was the same. I got along with colleagues from the Cycle Racing Club, but unlike with you guys, I couldn't just talk with them about everything. I guess that was a question of adolescence. I also hadn't spent the same amount of time with them. Ageha, the others, and I were neighbors as long as we remembered, and became each other's very first friends. If there was anyone else who I got along with... Idiot, moron, knucklehead! All that verbal abuse suddenly sprung to my mind. <laughs> do we... get along? It's true that the teacher had asked me to do it. I was told to make it easy for her to join in with everyone. Even if you were told to, you wouldn't have been... You would have worried about Habana-san anyway, anyway, wouldn't you? That was my intention, but I lost my self-confidence. After all, it had the opposite effect. Abane-san was absent today as well. Ageha thought it was her fault and was blaming herself. When I woke up this morning, Habane-san had already left. There were signs that the kitchen had been messed up. Apparently, she'd been searching for the withdrawal notice that I'd hidden. It was actually in the drawer in my room, though. It's not your fault that Habane-san hasn't come to school. Why do you think that? It's not just what I think. I'm almost completely certain. <sighs> the truth is... I remember that we were in the hallway of the school and took a quick look around. Nobody was passing by, so I didn't have to worry about anyone hearing that. habani san wants to quit school. Huh? It seems like she decided that quite a while ago, even before I returned here. Again, I was surprised to hear this out of the blue and was left speechless. Then... It's not because she argued with the girls in the class. There's a deeper reason for it. I think that it also is a reason for her recent behavior and attitude. So that's why she didn't join the soaring club? Yeah. Since she was planning to quit school soon, she thought it would just cause problems for us. Is that so... if... Ugh. So yesterday's argument... Was because you both misunderstood each other. I can't leave it like this! We still haven't cleared up our quarrel! If the bunny sign disappears as things are now, I don't know what I'll do. Bam bam! Ageha took her anger out on her uh, took her anger out on me by hitting my chest. Ow ow ow! You should have told me that sooner, you idiot! I only just found out by coincidence. Also, ouch! I can't just go around telling other people her secrets, can I? It was just a coincidence that I picked up the withdrawal notice. I didn't know that she was even planning on submitting it or when or if she was even really serious about it. I couldn't exactly ask her about it either. But... but... Bam bam! 
Okay, I'm sorry. That hurts. Seriously, stop punching me. Besides, I thought that she didn't want to quit school anymore. She'd been coming to school, helping with the meal preparation of the dormitory, and it looked like she, and it looked like she was enjoying herself. I just assumed that everything was fine now. On the way home to get today, I'm going there to apologize. Ali, come with me. Yeah, of course. Sniff. I stroked the Geha's head to calm her crying a little. Anyway, today was Friday. It was the deadline of the grace period for gathering club members given to us by the student council vice president, Kumoi Akari-san. After school, I went with the Geha and one other person to the Soren Club's garage. Including the club president, Amane-senpai, a total of four people were lined up. The vice president examined all of us one by one. Uh... <laughs> what is Kaneko doing here? Uh... A vein was clearly visible in the pri vice president's forehead. What is she doing here? What do you mean? She's the new member. I'm the new member, Shigure Kanako. Rejected. <laughs> what? Why? Please explain. Yes, yes. I told you that ghost members wouldn't be accepted. Why are you arbi arbitrarily assuming that? This is the tyranny of the student council. Yes, yes. Is it wrong that I'm longing for the sky? Six previous cases. This person is a notorious ghost member. What? Well, I get bored easily. That's why I reject it. Come on, isn't it fine? We're buddies in the same class. You two are in the same class? I guess they are in the same year. Come on, Akari-chan. Please don't get so clingy. She drove Kanako away with a flat refusal. It seems like she was used to dealing with her. Are there any other members? No. In that case, the club status is repealed. Vice President, <laughs> here. Amane sheepishly passed her a printout. Those were the results of the Soaring Club's activities that she had compiled. Hmm. H how is it? In all these years, you've only flown once a few days ago. Also, the fact that this occurred during lessons is an, is an outrage. Uh. You're not claiming to take part in any competitions, don't participate in school festivals, and you haven't really made any publications of your work or research. Ugh. This falls into the category of an extremely individual hobby. Isn't this something you'd call a circle activity? Yes. S senpai You can't just meekly admit it like that. It's no good, Vice President. Whatever happens, it's a place I want to go to. There was something that sounded like a desperate appeal in Amani Senpai's voice. A place you want to go to? I promised Isaka. I'm got I'm gonna take a wild guess and say that Isaka is gonna be the original owner of Koturi's diary. The vice president watched Senpai silently for a short while, as if she was unable to weigh her true motive. That's right. You're short one member with only three people. There have been no research publications. However... However... You are... The Vice President was about to say something very serious. Looked behind us as at the back of the garage. Habani-san! Habani-san was there. She came in at some point. I have something to give back. She said to Amani senpai To me? Nod. However, Habani-san didn't, Habani didn't come to us. She was beside the glider that had its sheets removed. She was looking slightly downward at something lying on her lap. Habani-senpai Abani, walked over to her. What is it? Once this is complete, will it fly above the clouds? Huh? Habani-san looked at the white sleek aircraft, and then she held out the thing that was on her lap, a photograph. Can I go to this place? This is... When Amane senpai saw this, she opened her eyes wide in surprise. This photo... Where was it? Tears welled up in her eyes. What is it? No idea. Ageha and I walked over to take a look at the photograph that abani san was holding. It was, a pro it was a photo of clouds.
a sunset, dyed in indigo and orange? Or was it sunrise? In the sky, beautifully dyed by a color clear morning glow, there was a huge, long cloud. It was stretched like a cloister laid across the firmament. This must have been the passage of clouds. It's beautiful. Yeah. Ageha and I, Kaneko-san, and even the Vice President, we were all fascinated by the miraculous spectacle shown in the photograph. Can it go to this place? Habani-san asked again. For a moment, my mind couldn't make a connection between the question and the view in the photograph. That was because it was a place too far away to be associated with the word go. In this place. Go there? Above the clouds? Riding this glider. I imagine this engineless white airframe inside the photograph, flying magnificently and gracefully across that solemn sky. That really was a miraculous sight. All of us, even Kaneko-san and Akari-san, held our breaths waiting for Amaya -senpai senpais answer. Can it go to this place? Yeah, it can go there. She murmured as she took the photograph and looked at it nostalgically. Because Isika said so, and she is a genius. Amani Senpai, who had tears in her eyes until just now, smiled happily after saying this name. I... I want to... join too. That's if someone like me won't be a burden. She spoke hesitantly, without much confidence in her voice. However, her eyes showed a strong determination. Seeing those eyes, Amani Senpai answered. Of course, you're very welcome. I met the sky and yearned for it. If my heart had wings. Okay, so is this... Wait, well, 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 let's just wait, let's wait. Uh, 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 uh. So it makes me curious, I don't know if this is like... A... Let's wait, let's just wait, we'll just chill. Kotori Habare, Aoi Misane, Minase. Akiha Himegi. Amane Mochizuki. Asa Kazato. Yoru Kazato. I know that Yoru means night, I'm pretty sure. And I think, I'm gonna say Asa means morning? Yeah, no, Asa, Asa is morning, Yoru is night. So, fitting for twins. This is what falling in love is about, is about without a doubt. All right, we're gonna go ahead and see it right there. Okay. So, I think we can officially say we are in the game now. We got past all of the introductions. We got past the, the build up to the club officially forming. And now we all are united. We have a common goal. And we're gonna get rolling, baby. So, we got to know, um, we got to learn about Habani-san. So, it's not like she was born this way or anything, which I, you know, could be inferred. But only, I mean, she was only in this accident that left her like this two years ago. And that's, a, and before that, she was an active volleyball player. So, it's like, this is something that happened to her very recently. Same with us as well. Um,. I imagine our accident only happened a handful of years ago as well. So, obviously we're all, well, specifically Aoi and Kotori are kind of able to relate to each other on a pretty, on an, an almost even level. Um, so, 
yeah, I mean, that's definitely grounds for some more relationship building. And obviously, we're going to have to find out what made Kotori change her mind about submitting that withdrawal appeal. Aside from the fact that she didn't have it, of course. Um, and then there's this photo. This photo... We don't know why Kotori has it. I'm assuming... I'm going to assume... Again, I'm going to go with my theory that this Isika person um, was the original owner of Kotori's diary. That photo was probably in the diary. And obviously... Um, Amane Senpai knows this Isika, presumably personally. And uh, I'm gonna guess it has something to do, their relationship has something to do with why she's continuously stayed in the school all this all these years as the super senior or the super repeat student to finish this glider and get it flying properly. So very interesting, very interesting indeed. But that's gonna be it for this time. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure to leave a like on the video and tell me in the comment section below what you'd like to see me play next. If you enjoyed this video, this video or any of the videos of series on my channel, then I highly recommend that you hit the subscribe button and turn on post notifications so you'll be notified when I new one of those videos comes out. Anyways, that's it for me, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace!